Hello. Well, well, we've got a rainy Friday afternoon. It's actually Thursday, but I'm not going to work tomorrow, so it's a very Friday-ish sort of Thursday. Um, I thought I'd show you the differences between our float caravan and our wheeled caravan while they're sitting side by side. Uh, so aside from the obvious, where one has floats and one doesn't, uh, this one is our grand caravan. So it's uh, the 208B, which is just shy of four feet longer than a 208, which is a, a short caravan, which the other one is. So from a distance, it's, it is hard to, uh, to tell the two apart. But what you'll see with this one is that in front of the wing there, there's no bulge, whereas on the Grand Caravan, you can see that bulge there. And that bulge is where they've extended the fuselage forward of the wing. And you'll also see that we have this one extra window here in the Grand Caravan, whereas the short one doesn't. So we've got one extra, extra window. So basically it's a, about a foot and three quarters extra in front of the wing and a foot and three quarters extra behind the wing which you can sort of see when you look at them side by side so one of the more obvious differences uh, the float one has floats which we've had a look at before in a video there's the oar and the wheel one obviously doesn't have floats um, some of the more subtle differences when you put it on floats are things like the exhaust so on this one you can see the exhaust coming out here where on the uh, the wheel machine with the pod the pod starts about here so that exhaust would then be melting melting the paint off the pod or melting the pod if it's pointing right on it like that whereas if we had the land plane exhaust on this one you would have it pointing out here and it'd be basically melting the paint off these float struts uh, and you can see what they do have in common is still that caravani turbiney engine exhaust stain uh, we'll go and have a look at the exhaust on the other one just for a comparison so here on the wheeled machine you can see that the exhaust angles out a little bit more out to the side because if we had the seaplane exhaust it'd be pointing pretty well at the pod there and on the float machine the struts come down about here so we'd be uh, we'd be melting those they both have the same prop on them and it looks exactly the same from the outside because it is the same model prop however the differences with this one and this is a freshly overhauled one so the blades look a lot nicer than on the wheel one which is about a half-life prop now this prop has pitch locks in there and you can see at the moment that we're in feather so if we look front on those blades are flat to the airflow or almost they're about 88 degrees i think the manual says so they're creating minimum drag when we've got the engine shut down but we uh we can lock these ones in fine pitch and when we do that would be if we're shutting the engine down on the water and we'd like to instantly be able to have thrust or instantly able to go into reverse thrust then that's where we'd lock the pitch in fine because of course on a normal prop or on a on a land plane prop if we were to lose the uh, the oil pressure i.e when we shut the engine down the oil pump stops it will gradually go into feather anyway but on a float plane that means that we're sitting there at the mercy of the breeze or the tide for you know how long does it take to come out of feather maybe 20 or 30 seconds so it looks exactly the same from the outside the two props but internally they are uh, they are a little bit different or, or not different but uh, got the addition of the pitch locks on the float machine another difference obviously is the height that we're sitting so sitting here in the cockpit of the floater we're looking down on the wheel machine which when you get up close to it is is a big machine in its own right uh, however uh, it looks fairly short from the perspective of this one uh, the eye line of course on landing is very different we're a good few feet higher so you do tend to when you swap between the two machines flying the same one or uh, sorry flying uh, the two different ones on the same day i do tend to flare slightly late in this one if i've just got out of the other one or vice versa uh, i have been told that this one is the same eye line as the cockpit of the 737 uh, i get to verify that fact but until someone tells me otherwise i'll uh, Keep, keep using that as a selling point for this machine. Uh, I could believe it, it is a long way up, but as far as the actual numbers, I'm not too sure. 
They've all got the same gauges because they're a similar era caravan model. Um, which is obviously not the G1000 where the engine gear is on the middle screen. And um, our other one of course does have uh, the two G600s there. But engine gauge wise, all the same layout. Nunciator panel, all the same. Circuit breakers, all the same. Uh, this one does have single point refueling. So that's uh, pressure refueling like an airliner, which out on the left hand float strut there is where the refueler plugs in and uh, just types in how much fuel we want and loads it across. Whereas if we're refueling one without, single point refueling, it's a long way up onto the wing. And this one has inboard and outboard fuel fillers. So if we were to have more fuel than the uh, height of the inboard filler and we opened that filler fuel will go everywhere so generally unless I'm only filling to a very low quantity I'd still use that one there because of course we can't always use single point refueling because the uh, the Bowser has to have the equipment as well well thanks a lot for watching along I hope you enjoyed that little comparison between the float caravan and the wheeled caravan we'll, uh, try and get some videos of the two of them in action shortly and uh, compare them in flight I'll see you in the next video